Book One, The Vision of the King. Before the gods that made the gods had seen their sunrise pass, the white horse of the white horse veil was cut out of the grass. Before the gods that made their gods had drunk at dawn their fill, the white horse of the white horse veil was hoary on the hill. Age beyond age on British land, aeons on aeons gone was peace and war in western hills, and the white horse looked on. For the white horse knew England when there was none to know. He saw the first oar break or bend. He saw heaven fall and the world end. Oh God, how long ago? For the end of the world was long ago, and all we dwell today as children of some second birth, like a strange people left on earth after a judgment day. For the end of the world was long ago, when the ends of the world waxed free, when Rome was sunk in a waste of slaves, and the sun drowned in the sea. When Caesar's son fell out of the sky, and whoso hearkened right could only hear the plunging of the nations in the night. When the ends of the earth came marching in to torch and cresset gleam, and the roads of the world that led to Rome were filled with faces that moved like foam, like faces in a dream. And men rode out of eastern lands, broad river and burning plain, trees that are titan flowers to see, and tiger skies striped horribly with tints of tropic rain, where inn's enameled peaks arise around that inmost one, where ancient eagles on its brink, vast as archangels, gather and drink the sacrament of the sun. And men break out of northern lands, enormous lands alone, where a spell is laid upon life and lust, and the rain is changed to a silver dust, and the sea to a great green stone and a shape that moveth murkily in mirrors of ice and night, hath blanched with fear all beasts and birds, as death and a shock of evil words blast a man's hair with white. And the cry of the palms and the purple moons, or the cry of the frost and foam, swept ever around an inmost place, and the din of distant race on race cried and replied round Rome. And there was death on the emperor, and night upon the Pope, and Alfred hiding in deep grass, hardened his heart with hope. A sea folk blinder than the sea broke all about his land, but Alfred up against them bare, and gripped the ground, and grasped the air, staggered and strove to stand. He bent them back with spear and spade, with desperate dike and wall, with foemen leaning on his shield, and roaring on him when he reeled, and no help. He broke them with a broken sword, a little toward the sea, and for one hour of panting peace, ringed with a roar that would not cease with golden crown and girded fleece made laws under a tree. The Northmen came about our land, a Christless chivalry who knew not of the arch or pen, great, beautiful, half-witted men from the sunrise and the sea. Misshapen ships stood on the deep, full of strange gold and fire, and hairy men as huge as sin, with horned heads, came wading in through the long, low sea mire. Our towns were shaken of tall kings with scarlet beards like blood. The world turned empty where they trod. They took the kindly cross of God and cut it up for wood. The souls were drifting as the sea, and all good towns and lands they only saw with heavy eyes, and broke with heavy hands. Their gods were sadder than the sea, gods of a wandering will who cried for blood like beasts at night, sadly from hill to hill. They seemed as trees walking the earth, as witless and as tall, yet they took hold upon the heavens, and no help came at all. They bred like birds in English woods. They rooted like the rose when Alfred came to Athelney to hide him from their bows. There was not English armor left, nor any English thing, when Alfred came to Athelney to be an English king. For earthquake swallowing earthquake uprent the Wessex tree. 
The whirlpool of the pagan sway had swirled his sires as sticks away when a flood smites the sea. And the great kings of Wessex wearied and sank in gore, and even their ghosts in that great stress grew grayer and grayer, less and less, with the lords that died in lioness and the king that comes no more. And the god of the golden dragon was dumb upon his throne, and the lord of the golden dragon ran in the woods alone. And if ever he climbed the crest of luck, and set the flag before, returning as a wheel returns, came ruin and the rain that burns, and all began once more. And not was left King Alfred, but shameful tears of rage, in the island, in the river, in the end of all his age. In the island, in the river, he was broken to his knee, and he read, writ with an iron pen, that God had wearied of Wessex men, and given their country field and fen to the devils of the sea. And he saw, in a little picture, tiny and far away, his mother sitting in Egbert's hall, and a book she showed him, very small where a sapphire Mary sat in stall with a golden Christ at play. It was wrought in the monk's slow manner from silver and sanguine shell where the scenes are little and terrible keyholes of heaven and hell. In the river island of Athelney with the river running past in colors of such simple creed all things sprang at him, sun and weed till the grass grew to be grass indeed, and the tree was a tree at last. Fearfully plain the flowers grew, like a child's book to read, or like a friend's face seen in a glass. He looked, and there a lady was. She stood and stroked the tall live grass as a man strokes his steed. Her face was like an open word when brave men speak and choose. The very colors of her coat were better than good news. She spoke not, nor turned not, nor any sign she cast. Only she stood up straight and free between the flowers and athelny, with the river running past. One dim ancestral jewel hung on his ruined armor gray. He rent and cast it at her feet, where after centuries, with slow feet men came from hall and school and street and found it where it lay. Mother of God, the wanderer said, I am but a common king, nor will I ask what saints may ask to see a secret thing. The gates of heaven are fearful gates, worse than the gates of hell. Not I would break the splendors barred to seek they know the thing they guard, which is too good to tell. But for this earth most pitiful, this little land that I know, for if that which is forever is, or if our hearts shall break with bliss, seeing the stranger go, when our last bow is broken queen, and our last javelin cast, under some sad green evening sky, holding a ruined cross on high, under warm westland grass to lie, shall we come home at last? And the voice came human, but high up like a cottage climbed among the clouds, or a surf of hut and croft that sits by his hovel fire as oft but hears on his old bare roof aloft, a belfry burst in song. The gates of heaven are lightly locked. We do not guard our gain. The heaviest hind may easily come silently and suddenly upon me in a lane, and any little maid that walks in good thoughts apart may break the guard of the three kings and see the dear and dreadful things I hid within my heart. The meanest man in grey fields, gone behind the set of sun, heareth between star and other star, through the door of the darkness fallen ajar. The council, eldest of things that are, the talk of the three in one. The gates of heaven are lightly locked. We do not guard a gold. Men may uproot where worlds begin, or read the name of the nameless sin, but if he fail, or if he win, no good man is told. The men of the East may spell the stars, and times and triumphs mark, but the men, signed of the cross of Christ, go gaily in the dark. The men of the East search the scrolls for sure fates and fame, 
but the men that drink the blood of God go singing to their shame. The wise men know what wicked things are written on the sky. They trim sad lamps. They touch sad strings, hearing the heavy purple wings where the forgotten seraph kings still plot how God shall die. The wise men know all evil things. Under the twisted trees where the perverse and pleasure pine, and men are weary of green wine and sick of crimson seas. But you, and all the kind of Christ, are ignorant and brave, and you have wars you hardly win, and souls you hardly save. I tell you not for your comfort, yea, not for your desire save that the sky grows darker yet and the sea rises higher night shall be thrice night over you and heaven an iron cope do you have joy without a cause yea faith without a hope and even as she spoke she was not nor any word said he only he heard, still as he stood, under the old knight's nodding hood, the sea folk breaking down the wood like a high tide from sea. He only heard the heathen men, whose eyes are blue and bleak, singing about some cruel thing done by a great and smiling king in daylight on a deck. He only heard the heathen men, whose eyes are blue and blind, singing what shameful things are done between the sunlit sea and the sun when the land is left behind.